Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Jade Alberts. I'm a business strategist, influencer, and brand building. My passion is helping small business grow and succeed. Sharing knowledge and stories is why I started the Telling It Like It Is Facebook live show. It is a live show. If you do have any questions now or even after the fact, when we post this on our social media platforms, ask them. We will get back to you. I would like to thank Healthy Heart Sleep Company, Calgary's premier sleep apnea CPAP company for sponsoring this show. They have two locations in Calgary, so please support local. Today's guest is Ted Fleming, the founder of Partake Brewing. Ted, thank you for joining me today, and how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, Jade. Oh, I appreciate, the, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, I always like to start off and let people know how we met because networking is so important, and I know we, uh, we met on the squash court, and I like to tell people that it was a really close match, but really uh, you mopped me up three straight, so... <laughs> It was close. All those games were close. <laughs> I tried to have a, another hit with you, and it didn't go very well either. So I'll I'll, I'll take the the lesson slash training when we play again. <laughs> so I know you had a um, just recently you had on uh, you won another award. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So we were just at the uh, Seattle show in Toronto, which is an international food and, and beverage show, and uh, there was a an award. Uh, uh, for product innovation, so uh, we're, I think we're we're making pretty innovative products in a new space, and uh, it's nice to be recognized for, for that. No, that's awesome, and and congratulations on that. It's always great to win awards, especially uh, especially new and innovative ones. That that is excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. So I'll give a brief introduction here, and then we'll we'll get right into it. So Ted is the founder of uh, Partake Brewing, a premium non-alcoholic beer. Um, in 2005, he was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, uh, and he started to make some significant life changes, which led to the decision of eliminating alcohol from his diet. The problem was he loved beer, and he found that the quality and variety of non-alcoholic beer at the supermarket was just not good. And since then, he's been on a mission to assemble an unprecedented selection of the world's finest non-alcoholic pro uh, product, you know, across Canada, and obviously expanding. So, obviously, a lot of my people I interview start this out of a need and I met, briefly mentioned uh, your situation. Can you, you know, expand a little bit on that and share that story? Sure. So yeah, but a little over 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And uh, so that kind of puts me in my late twenties. And um, you know, at the time when you're, when you're at that age, you're like, Oh, you know, I'll just, you know, you know, get through this. It's not going to be a big deal. Um, but it turned out to be a big deal. And, uh, I was on vacation a few years after that initial diagnosis in Europe and, um, and this, uh, beautiful summer vacation spot. And I ended up in the hospital for at least half the vacation. And I was there with my wife and my, um, my first child who was just a few months old. And, you know, when you're, when you're in a hospital with a nice view of some, you know, aquamarine water and you're sitting in a hospital bed. Um, you know, you have some time to reflect and, uh, I took that time to say, okay, I needed to, to make some changes in my life to be healthier and to, to take this, uh, disease I had a bit more seriously and, and having, having become a father for the first time recently, you know, was part of, was part of that decision. So, you know, that was the start of a lot of changes. One of those was a decision to give up alcohol that, that came a few years later, but, uh, sort of that was the sort of spark that set me on this path. Well, and, and that, that, that is very interesting. And as I stated before, people usually come out of, uh, you know, something great when, when they have, uh, have a change. So when you say it came up a few years later, was it just something that, was it affecting your lifestyle or, or it was just something that you decided to cut out anyway? Yeah, I, I saw for me anyways, there was a there was a strong correlation between drinking alcohol and having some some symptoms. And okay. so I decided, hey, I, this is something, you know, it's undeniable the, the link I need to change. And I started to try non-alcoholic beer as a way to reduce the alcohol that I was consuming, yet still maintain, you know, the lifestyle I was living, the social connection just having a beer after playing sports squash in particular, yeah. it's a lot of beer <laughs> consumed after that. And a lot of it is just, you know, you're not drinking necessarily to get a buzz. You're just, you like the refreshment, you're socializing yeah. afterwards. It's just part of the, the whole experience. 
And so I, I found that to be part of my experience and I wanted to continue that. So I started trying non-alcoholic beers that were available at the time. You know, this, there, there really was nothing in terms of variety. There was, it was only lagers. The quality was poor. There were weird ingredients like corn syrup. So they were almost not even beers, really. They were kind of soda type beers. So, you know, I decided to take a crack at, you know, making this a better experience for me and, you know, in the, in the process, make it a better experience for other people. Oh, and that is awesome. And I agree with you with the non-alcoholic, uh, the, the beers before I, before I tried yours after we met there and I was like, wow, this is, this is absolutely amazing. Uh, so how did you, uh, how did you come up with, uh, partake and really what differentiates uh, your beer from other non-alcoholic beers? Yeah, so the the brand name, uh, I, I had a few brand names prior to Partake, and I'm not going to share them because they're kind of embarrassingly awful. Um, so I, there was an agency I talked to, and we were having a meeting, and I showed them some of my ideas, and they said, yeah, those are terrible, and uh, you should call it this, Partake. And and I thought about it for a while, and I, then I thought, yeah, that's that's actually a great name because what that conveys to me is a lot of people like myself just want to enjoy non-alcoholic beer as much for the socializing and, and feeling like you're, you're part of the group as for a lot of the other factors. So I think that covered people like me who came to it from a health reason, people who drink non-alcoholic beer for religious reasons, people who drink it just for, you know, the low calories or, or other reasons. So the common thread amongst all these sort of groups is that they just want to, you know, they all really just want to socialize and and be part of the the larger group and not be ostracized and pointed out for drinking a, a water or or a, a soda. <laughs> I know that after a lot of squash matches, I just drink water because I don't drink a lot of beer uh, anymore. And it's everyone's like, oh, what's going on? Are you OK? Is it, uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah. I understand that uh, and our gym doesn't serve partake, but we'll have to change that. <laughs> Yeah. So, that, you know, that's, that's less of an issue now. Like there's a, there's been a real evolution of how people view not people not drinking alcohol in certain situations, but you know, it's only a few years ago that, that, that stigma was still very strong um, in terms of how our beer is differentiated. Um, so we're using craft brewing process. We're using just natural ingredients. So our beers only contain water, barley, hops, and yeast. So, things beer should be made of and nothing else. Um, and we're getting, you know, authentic taste profiles that are for most people indistinguishable from their alcoholic co counterparts. So someone can enjoy our beer, move on to an alcoholic version of the same styles, whether it's a pale ale or a blonde ale and, and have kind of a seamless experience. And, you know, they're getting the authentic taste that they expect without some of the sweetness and, and other, aspects that are you know that that were typical of, of previous brands of non-alcoholic beer i think a big a big benefit to us and this wasn't really a design criteria when we were developing our products was all our beers have come out super low in calories so our blonde ale is 15 calories per can our pale ale is 10 our ipa is 10 and our stout is 10 so basically it you know it's a free a free product to drink you probably burn more than 10 calories in the act of drinking the beer. And um, yeah, it's just, it, we've, we've gotten great traction from that into communities like the keto and paleo diet community, uh, people with diabetes, it, it uh, appeals to. So, you know, we're with that nutritional aspect, we're, we're gaining a lot more followers. Oh, and I, when, when you told me that I almost fell off my chair, I, I could not believe that, that, that is amazing. <laughs> And I guess speaking into the, uh, you know, segueing into, you know, your marketing and your advertising, I mean, this is a huge market and obviously that's probably a big part of it, but people are loyal to the brands. How have you been able to, you know, get your brand out there and, and compete with the, the big boys, so to say? Yeah. So I think people in this day and age, millennials in particular, respect the brand story that we have. It's an authentic story. It came from a need. Um, so there's there's certainly empathy with our with our brand story, and the product supports that because it's uh we we won the award at Seattle but we've won multiple awards 
prior to that as well, including the World Beer Award for best tasting non-alcoholic beer. So the, the quality of the product supports the brand story. And, the, you know, the thrust of how we're reaching people now is really, you know, get people to try the beer. When they do, they love it. 90% of people who try it will then ask where to buy it. And, you know, hopefully a large percentage of those will actually go out and buy it. So, you know, that's a, that's a key element to what uh, we're doing to build the brand. And, and we're supporting that with uh, digital marketing. Yeah. And your marketing is awesome. I, I've seen a lot of it and you're, you're, the agency is doing an excellent job and, and kudos to you on that. It's uh, I guess when, when, when we're out there or you're out there and we're talking about, um, you know, getting, getting it out there, you know, you were on Dragon's Den. I mean, I, I watch it religiously. I mean, you're the only person I've talked to. I mean, I've known other people and friends that have been on there, but you know, can you share that experience with us and uh, and and tell tell our viewers what what was good and bad about it? Sure. So I went on, you know, approximately two years ago, uh, and um, at that point we only had a prototype product. So I, I, in hindsight, it might have been a little early for us. If we would have been better off coming next year when we had a bit more distribution. By the time it aired, it was March of the next year, so we had a little bit of distribution. Um, you know, I, I tell other entrepreneurs that ask me about it, it's it's a good experience. You know, it's kind of one of those trials by fire that <laughs> that will separate some of the, uh, you know, the guys that will go forward and those that aren't. And I encourage any entrepreneur, whether it's Dragon's Den or other pitch competitions to really engage in that because I think it's a great platform. You know, TV obviously is going to get you way more eyeballs on on what you're doing in your brand, especially if you're a consumer uh, a consumer facing brand. Um, and then, but I say even smaller events where you're just pitching to a room of 50 people, well, you've got a captive audience of 50 people tell your story. You know, there's competitions where you can win prizes or money, but I think it's, I think it's a very valuable tool, just the, the whole pitch process and, you know, dragon's den for some people is a, is a culmination of that. And it's brought a visibility to entrepreneurship and, uh, and uh, pitching in, in Canada where, you know, in, in going to the U.S., we are a bit behind in terms of uh, pitching and entrepreneurship uh, relative to our U.S. counterparts. And that is interesting. And I mean, you talked about your, your distribution there. Um, and I know you do some of it uh, online. Um, for anybody watching here, you can just click on the comments there at drinkpartake.com. It'll take you right to their website. You can order it there. I know you obviously started in Ontario. Um, and, you, and you're in the LCBOs out there. So how is uh, how is that going? Where have you expanded? How how are things going in the West? And uh, kind of what's next for you? Yeah, so we're I think uh, in Canada close to 1,500 retail locations. Um, some days I think that's not enough, and then I take a step back and say we've only had a physical product for 18 months. So that's is actually quite quite a, a big feat. Um, yeah. Certainly we started online, so that helped us kind of build brand awareness, get our product to people before we we built out that distribution footprint. In Alberta, we're in, I would say, a little over 150 uh, retail outlets that's combined uh, liquor stores and uh, and bars and restaurants. And BC, uh, we're probably in the, in the same range. Ontario's got a bit more distribution for us, and we're expecting to be in um, largely in, uh, or, or to sort of break out into grocery a bit more widely in, in the fall. At this point, we're in, you know, largely the liquor channel. That was, in a way, that was backwards from how I saw things developing. I thought grocery would be our, our first push, followed by liquor. But um, with a lot more independent stores in, in the liquor channel, that was, uh, it was easier to break into that and, and talk to individual store owners and, and, actually allow our customers and our fans to talk to their local stores to bring it in for them. So there, there's that ecosystem of customers driving uh, retail. Oh, and that's, <laughs> there's no better way to do it than that. Or having the client, having the customers put the pressure on the stores to, uh, to bring it in. That, that's, yeah. uh, and, and that's a positive that shows that your brand's out there, you're marketing it properly and, 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 and reaching the right people. So that's kudos to you on that. So I know, I, I know you're kind of, kind of a craft brewery have the, and there's obviously been a boom in craft breweries in the, in the last, you know, 
I don't know, four to six years, I guess. Have they kind of accepted you as one of their own as a, as a non-alcoholic version? You know, there, there are, uh, you know, people approach us in two ways in, in that community, but we're seeing more and more, especially with the smaller crap breweries who have a tap room, mm. we're getting more and more orders from those smaller breweries to have our beer in their tap room. I think for them, there's a, there's a, a compelling argument that, you know, their, their customers aren't going to drink alcohol 365 days of the year. They may want to take a week off. They may want to take a month off. Um, but that doesn't mean they still can't go to their brewery. If they have our beer, they can have, they can still have a craft non-alcoholic beer. They can, you know, be true to the time off that they want from, from alcohol, but still be part of that um, community that, that happens around the tap room uh, or restaurant within, within a craft brewery. And I think that just goes back to the name partake. They're just able to stay in touch with their customers. Their customers keep going there. It's as their regular weekly or, you know, multiple times a week place. And yet they can still, you know, take time off alcohol. So they, there, there, there isn't a gap between when they potentially would lose that customer, they can keep that customer coming back and, and, and being just part of their community, even if they're not drinking anymore, whether it's for short term or if it's a long term thing. So we're seeing more and more acceptance, especially from smaller breweries with tap rooms. And uh, I think the larger breweries are coming along. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them start making their own non alcoholic beer, which, you know, a few years ago when I approached many, they said, uh, no, <laughs> forget it. There's not, there's nothing there. And all of a sudden, um, you know, I think things, things look differently for them now. Oh, and that's uh, Hey, when you're turning the heads of the big boys, that that's a very good sign. <laughs> Uh, again, you can uh, joining us is uh, Ted Fleming of uh, Partake. Uh, you can click on the link below, drink cart, drinkpartake.com. I guess my one last question is, uh, and I want to kind of think of it more as um, as an expansion question because I ask this of everybody. If you had one tip for any entrepreneur uh, or small business owner, what would it be? But kind of now that you're expanding across Canada, is there any um, – any good advice that you can give to, to on that uh, end of um, for a startup? Like I, we have a lot on our plate, and we're we're still a fairly small team for our growth rate and the amount of sales we have. Um, so there's still a lot that falls on my my own plate, and yeah. you know sometimes it can feel overwhelming. I think you know being able to divide that up into small bits and and just put your head down and, and grind it out day by day and do it day in and day out. I think that that leads to success. And um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, being, being willing to say it, it can take nine months to get into a retailer and you just have to keep in touch, do, do the small things little by little, not expect Rome to be built in a day. And, you know, in, in a few years you'll, you'll have something really, awesome to look back on. And even now just 18 months into having our first product where we are versus then is, you know, when I take a step back and look at it is, is very impressive, but you know, when you're in the weeds some days, you, you <laughs> lose that perspective. So. No, very true. And and that's great advice. And, and I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing your story and your knowledge with us. It's uh it's priceless, especially to see someone that, uh, you know, in my opinion, the way you're growing organically and, and what you've done and, and the sacrifice. I mean, you've moved your family from Ontario to Calgary to, to make sure that it grows out here. And I mean, a lot of people don't realize the sacrifice that it takes to make a business work. So that is, that is very impressive. Yeah, that was, uh, it wasn't really planned us coming to Calgary. It was related to my, my wife's job, but we, we love the city. It's a great place to live and we think it's a great place to raise raise our kids. Um, in all honesty, it's it's made some aspects of the business more difficult because we have a lot of people, most of our people are in Ontario. So, you know, staying in touch with them and giving everyone the face time they need is, is a bit more challenging from here. Um, at the same time, I think we've, you know, we've expanded in, in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba and BC more rapidly, probably because I'm here and sort of able to put in the FaceTime with people in Western Canada. So, yeah. 
No, for sure. I mean, people want to see, uh, people love seeing the face to face and, and we've, we've lost a lot of that in today's digital world. And, 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 and you be, I agree, and I agree hundred percent with you being out here has probably helped you expand into the West, uh, a, a lot quicker. So again, I appreciate it, Ted. Thank you very much for coming on and, and, uh, sharing your story today. Thanks, Jade. It was a great interview. Thank you. Excellent. And again, thank you to Healthy Heart Sleep Company for sponsoring this. You're Calgary's premier CPAP um, sleep apnea company. They have two locations and support local. So thanks again, Ted. I hope everybody has a great week and we will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.